Now, uh, let's move on. We're going to get Rich Tires Russia going in just one second. We're going to play you this, though. It is uh, some Roy Keane goodness from last night. The focus just on one game, and everyone was talking about the final. What are you talking the about? The football's <laughs> coming <laughs> home. <laughs> Go on, do your impression. Right. <laughs> We wasn't talking about the final like that. We were just having a laugh with you. The fact is, we were trying to just like we were happy. You yeah. weren't happy for us being happy at that time. But I, I think that we. Were, I don't mind you uh, being happy, but you're you, you, like getting carried away. <laughs> it's, it's, and I was right. You were planning the final where the parades were. No, we were. You, you were. No, you were talking about. No. You did a reality check. No, we were. You no, did a semi. Why should Why should we get excited about it? It was, it was something. Yeah, get excited. excited. Listen, about. get excited when they get to the final. No, but the, this was the right. semi-final. People the group match. People didn't even expect us to get to the semi-final. What can we be excited about being in there? Yeah, so Ian Wright uh, giving out to Roy Keane. He wasn't the only one to be giving out to Roy Keane. Ed Miliband um, tweeted. I want to get the exact correct tweet. Oh, there it is. Roy Keane is just awful. I am sorry. Roy, Roy Keane is just awful. I'm sorry. <laughs> he still hasn't quite managed to blow his nose, has he? When he's talking. <laughs> Uh, regardless of what it is he's saying. Rich Targe, you're welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Owen. Thank you. So, <coughs> England are going home. Yeah, yeah, they're going home. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's amazing, I think, the, the general reaction um, in Ireland to it. I mean, it seems to be split down the middle with regard to can we actually say that we think England are really lucky, that they've been the luckiest team. I think they've been the luckiest I can't remember an easier route to the, certainly to the quarters. Uh, even the quarters, Sweden didn't play well. Um, I think they've been incredibly lucky to get, get this far. And uh, they had the perfect start. And uh, Croatia were miles better, I thought, uh, for the rest of the game and uh, deserved to win. Yeah. I thought their England were exposed. The weaknesses were exposed, and um, I personally, I'm happy because I, I just, I, I couldn't stand, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. More, it's the usual thing, like just more from the point of view of uh, the fans' reaction and uh, being completely over the top. Having said that, if the same thing was to have occurred in Ireland, how mad would we have gone? Yeah, uh, well, we're the best fans in the world, so it would have been England times a million, right? I think so. I think so. Yeah, um, it's coming home. I think would have been the least irritating thing <laughs> that Ireland could have come up with. Uh, it probably would have been Tosh a talk to Alia, jumping on the, the bag, bandwagon or something. But um, yeah, it was it was it was hard. Uh, I, you know, yeah, obviously you, the players seem like a nice bunch of lads and, and all that. My son's a massive Spurs fan and we've been over to Spurs a few times and Harry Kane is is uh, is a big hero of his and um, you know uh, I he didn't play well. No. Yes, they didn't really get much much service, obviously. But they, they, they got this far, essentially, without a midfield. I mean... Jordan Henderson. Jordan Henderson. And I don't want to say, like, I told you so, like, like Eamon Dunphy might do. Um, but a week before he missed the penalty, I think I said in the studio, Jordan Henderson... Kenny Cunningham was sitting beside me. Uh, I think I said he's going to miss a penalty. If Jordan Henderson has to take a penalty in the penalty shootout, he, is the, he has an English penalty missing head on him. <laughs> Doesn't he? He yeah. does. He just has the, he has one of those heads that you kind of think. As soon as he was picked for England, you thought one day he's going to miss penalty, and it it wasn't wasn't vital as it turned out. But um, will they ever win a World Cup? Do you think? Uh, it's it's a, it's a good question. I I I don't. Uh, this this bunch of players, you kind of think if they you know missing this opportunity, yeah, I can't I can't I can't see them getting a better opportunity. Um, they do have some good players. I mean, they definitely have some good attacking players. They've got some flair, flair players that they probably didn't have before. A bit of a team ethic that they had before, that they didn't have before. And, and Southgate seems to have instilled that. But Southgate's like this kind of, you know, it's kind of like, you know, this sort of muse, isn't he? He's sort of, you know, you feel like there's some wisdom there. You know, he kind of thinks a lot of things uh, behind the scenes. Um, as some deep thoughts. I think he just speaks slowly. What is that's it, uh, what it is. So is it real? <laughs> like, is there, is there depth to that, or is it just? Uh, I've looked at everything. See how this works. Don't be don't be loud and obnoxious. And I've realised if I if I grow a beard and wear a, wear a waistcoat, I'll get away with a lot of stuff. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think he probably has. Uh, I mean, I think it's real that the fact that the players have responded to him. Mm. Um, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how 
far. Ultimately, it doesn't carry you far enough to win a trophy if you if you don't have the players. I mean, yeah. I think it has to stating the obvious, really. But um, you know, uh, I, I just don't. Uh, I, I think you get found out ultimately. I think he, he definitely won friends and influenced people by being like not brash and arrogant and we're going out there and we're going to win the World Cup. And Harry yeah. Kane has that same humility. He does, he does. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's the, it's the same, it's a similar kind of personality. And, um, you know, I think that's what everybody, everybody jumped on as well, is like, you know, Harry Kane seems, he's a very untypical kind of English footballer. And they're saying that, you know, there's something really nice about Harry Kane. Somebody said to me recently, I, I, I think that's the Irish part. And, uh, you know, I know that sounds maybe like, you know, get a, get a, you know, a little bit xenophobic. But um, uh, <laughs> he is, he does have an unusual kind of, yeah, apart from the way he talks and all that, he does have a sort of a, there's a, there's a kind of a, there's a vulnerability there um, that's kind of appealing. The, like when everybody talks about this England team, it's like they're, they're such nice people, as you said, they're, they're so humble. And it's like people are like, well, how do you actually know that? How do you know the, the, the real England? And it's like, well, their, their PR has been excellent. And it's like, well, that's the point of PR. Indeed, indeed. No, ab absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, and, and I suppose Gareth Southgate has had that effect as well, where he's invited the press in in a way that they haven't had exposure to before. And they feel, I think, that they that they know the players um, and maybe a little bit better, they're, they're, they're kind of fearless, they have that, 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 but again, it's a PR angle, isn't it? It's not, I mean, how, how, how real is anything like that? Yeah. Uh, if it's manufactured, it's, it's obviously, you know, you'd suspect it's not really 100% um, genuine. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the media reaction over there, the Roy Keane piece uh, you played earlier, I mean, you know, Keane giving out hell to 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 Ian Wright, and I mean it's like we were saying earlier. Like England are desperate, you know, the nation are desperate to have something positive to, to cling on to, uh, with what's happening politically. Yeah. It's just so negative over there. It's, it's it must be horrific, and uh, it's an amazing time. This this yeah. coalescence of events where, like, their political system is falling apart. The Tory yeah. party is eating itself to try and escape from Europe, and people are beginning to actually turn back towards Europe, like while the team is actually doing well by being humble and not by being this all-conquering, aggressive, empire-building wankers that we all hated all our lives. It's yeah. like, yeah. that's such a weird thing to happen. But it was a fear as well, I think, certainly, I think, in my neck of the woods, or where or my perspective, that, that if England did win, that there'd be a certain amount of Brexiteers like that. that would say, told you so. so. You know, told you. We're much better off leaving Europe because therefore we win the World Cup because we're the best team in the world. Um, Tommy so Robinson. exactly, yeah. kind of justify that uh, extreme opinion. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I like uh, you know Keane. Uh, whatever you think about him, he's consistently inconsistent, isn't he? Uh, you know, and, and he said the same about when Ireland were knocked out. Uh, you know, um, uh, Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry. That you know, I don't know what Shea Given is doing, letting the ball bounce. What's Shea Given doing, letting the ball bounce? Uh, it's, gonna, it's not the moment, you know, uh, <laughs> tragedy plus time, uh, crimes and misdemeanors, Woody Allen, tragedy plus time, let it rest, we need time to digest this, well, that was our own fault for letting the ball bounce, what's he doing that for? <laughs> it was and exactly then, the same, we, did, we accused John Stones of ball watching, we see it every week, Yeah, that was it last night. What's he doing that for? So I get, okay, he, you know, not now, Roy, not now, and he's on English telly, and uh, uh, Ed Miliband, I'd say, was the most the the most moderate of reactions he got on Twitter. Yeah, I wonder is he talking himself out of a job from like chairman of clubs in England going, hang on a second. Yeah, yeah. well I think his football probably did Maybe that, did his, that. his management <laughs> skills. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean yeah. Dunphy obviously had a proper crack at him as well. Um, I don't know when that was, it was a few days ago. Uh, that he doesn't have any insight. You know, there's no real insight. He's just, he's, you know, spouting on. <laughs> Uh, mm, yeah, does that ring a bell, Eamon? <laughs> no. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, no, I, the, uh, th uh, anyway. We're getting to that point now where we can judge about the, uh, what type of a World Cup the various pundits have had. How has the RTE panel evolved this time? Because obviously they're trying to inject new blood. It's the first ever World Cup without John Giles on our TV, so yeah. it's a different time. It's interesting, like uh, uh, like the the Dunphy the Dunphy Brady kind of axis, the the, the Dunphy Brady Accord, uh, where. 
they seem to be kind of displaying how much they agree with each other more than any other year. Like, I can't remember. And it's almost like to make the other person on the panel feel less comfortable, particularly if it's somebody new who fancies themselves like Keith uh, or even the Duffer. Like, I, I, thought, I thought the Duffer had a great uh, match uh, last night, actually. I thought, his, I thought he was really good last night. Um, but it's it's literally like, you know, Dunphy's what became more English, I think, than the English themselves. Is that you see, these are a great bunch of guys. They're they're great they're great they're great people and they I think, you know, they're our neighbours and you know, we, we should support them and it's like it's like this forward thinking, you know, philosophical aiming. Um, you know, it's the modern approach and, and I'm not gonna be backward and um, but uh, you know they they all said uh, that to a man that that England were going to win, and uh, and then Eamon says that the greatest after the match is the greatest the greatest uh, the quote is the, the the great credit tonight goes to Liam for seeing the potential in Croatia. You go, <laughs> what? He gets all the credit. Like, you know, was he playing? Did he have anything? And it's all because he's put all his money on Croatia. That's what it actually boils down to. <laughs> Uh, even though he said that before and he said, you know, it's not going to do me wallet any favours, but I think England are going to win. And, you know, <laughs> uh, and yes, I, I agree with, I agree with, yeah, I, I agree with Eamon. Yeah, well, I agree with Liam. I agree with Liam. And Liam is right to agree with me because if he doesn't, he'll be bullied. Uh, you know, and that's kind of yeah, essentially the, the little axis. Um, and, uh, you know, Duffer is kind of, Duffer was sort of like, you know, the whole thing is pointless anyway, because there's no point in me saying anything, because, you know, I'll just be interrupted by one of them, and, you know, what's the point anyway, and just get on with it, and everything's so obvious, what's the point in saying it? And, it does feel that way, it's like Duffer's yeah. kind of like, well, I mean, you're asking me these dumb questions to explain this thing, it's like... Well, he actually asked yeah. Dunphy a question last night before the game, which I thought was like, because you're banging the money about it, it is two versus one, and they're constantly surveying uh, the, the person on the right. Yeah. And Duffer actually kind of took it upon himself to ask uh, Dunphy a question last night. He was like, why, why are Croatia so good in such a situation? Is it fitness or is it skill? And of course, Dunphy's like, character. It's all about character. Yeah, it's all about character. Yeah, you see, I know what character means. And you know, the fact that I know he, the, the fact that he deferred... Yeah. <laughs> to Eamon was I, like the, the respect he's given on the panel is 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 quite extraordinary. I think, um, given the level the level of nonsense and the hypocrisy. I mean, it's 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 just he says one thing and literally says the other thing five minutes later. Yeah. And uh, you know, and it's like, who do you think Dara would say? So so, who's your favourite, Eamon? Who who do you think's gonna like? Who do you think will prevail? And uh, Eamon is that sounds actually more like Eamon Dunphy. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, switching. Um, but Eamon has, has literally said Spain, Argentina, you know, France, <laughs> Brazil, you know, uh, they, th that's where my money's going. And it's like, you know, somebody who bets on a, on, a, on a regular basis, they'll never tell you if they've lost money. Yeah. You know, it's because they, uh, they, they realise that Croatia would be England, but they, they like, they wanted England to win, which is why we put my money on it. But, you know, I knew Croatia would actually win, you know, <laughs> so, okay, do you? Uh, makes, makes no sense. Um, at all. Uh, have they had a good World Cup? Have, have Brady and Dumpy had a good World Cup? Because at some point this is coming to an end. This could be the last Dumpy World Cup. We don't know. They don't like formally announce. Mm. But it feels like it's getting to that point where there's enough new people now that we don't really need Dumpy on TV anymore. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just, I, I think there's too much of that. I think there's too much of that, um, you know, you, that there's, there's kind of a pact uh, between them almost. And uh, it's like Eamon used a great word to describe um, Croatia. What was it, Eamon? Uh, efficient. They're very efficient. It's like, is he, did, did he invent the word? Yeah. Uh, you know, come on. Uh, we don't need we don't need that kind of level of... of um, I just think it's... it's uh, yeah, I, 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 um, I'd, I'd prefer... I like it when it's mixed up. I think, I think Keith has had a great World Cup, Keith yeah. Andrews. Uh, I think he's really good. Knows the stuff. Knows the players, stats. Um, does work. Uh, works. Yeah. yeah, that's a big yeah. thing. It's like does yeah. some research. Yeah, and I just like his presence. I think it's it's um, it's it's a good combination. And I also think the the younger blood bring out the better in uh, brings out the better things in the presenters. I think I think I think Dara is more comfortable with with people around his own age. Yeah. and I think Dara. It's obviously really tough. For, for for Dara to have inherited Bill's shoes because that was the kind of that was the quartet uh, yeah. you know Bill Eamon, uh Giles and Brady and um, there's sort of a bit of it left so it's it's it's, it's I think it's a tough gig for anyone presenting us because Liam and Eamon are like you know 
the bullies yeah. <laughs> in the corner and say, yeah, you think so, do you, Dara? Yeah. You know, there's a bit of that. Uh, you, you're happy with that question, are you? Show us a your bit medals. Of that. Yeah. yeah, show us your medals. Yeah. What about Peter Collins? Uh, how's he getting on? Uh, well, I think Peter, Peter's, Peter's had a, he's had a, an interesting one. Uh, you know, we were talking about his, his uh, reaction to Hope Solo the other day, but he has uh, a, a way of, of, of asking questions, which is, uh, I mean, do you think Brazil will be uh, disappointed not to have uh, won the, that, that match? I mean, insofar as, of course, they're going to be disappointed, but like, do, do you think they'll be disappointed because they didn't play their best, or do you think they did play their best, or do you think Neymar's had a good World Cup or a bad World Cup? I mean, Neymar, he's had a bitty, bit, you know, bit of a bit of a sort of an indifferent World Cup really hasn't by Neymar's standards. By that I mean that he, you know, and it, it t tends to be a world <laughs> record longest question. So they and the the they don't know when to get in. Do do we answer that bit? No, or we, are we going back to the? So uh, yeah, but um, yeah, and I think he's he tends to explain things that are. Now that's all we have time for. So we are going to a commercial break, which are a series of ads, uh, <laughs> which happen after I say a commercial break. Uh, there's, a bit, there's a bit of that, um, but uh, lovely fella, lovely fella. But you feel he'd be more comfortable on a bike, yeah, um, sitting on a bike or in a <laughs> room or with a helmet on. He just he has that vibe about him. He's a bit of a DJ voice, doesn't he? You kind of think I'm presenting the football. What am I doing here? I don't know. But room, let's go. There's a bit of that going on. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, what about the BBC and the rest of the stuff over there? Like, how have they got on? Um, there's been, it's, they've top names, obviously. Yeah, they do, and... Uh, Ankle Ban. Ankle Ban. Oh, Kevin just agrees with everything, I think, didn't he? he he's just that, uh, you know, no, I think, I think absolutely, that, um, but, uh, you know, say something like, yeah. Brazil have had a pretty disappointing, yeah, they've been disappointed, I think, Brazil, you know, they really have. I, I, do, I just don't think they've had it this time, you know, they haven't really had it a lot. Defensively, they've been great, haven't they? But actually, I don't think Brazil, I thought Brazil were unlucky. Yeah, I think they were unlucky. I thought they were quite unlucky, actually. I agree, yeah, I think they were quite unlucky. But they didn't deserve, no, they didn't deserve it. No, they didn't deserve it. England deserved it. Yeah, I thought England were great. I thought England, but they were crap. Yeah, they were crap as well. Um, sorry, Kev. Um, <laughs> He's going to be waiting outside. Now. Yeah, he's he'll be waiting outside. In the country. It's, uh, he's, he's finally back. He can, um... It was interesting, I thought, the dynamic between Lineker and... Uh, and Ferdinand, and because Ferdinand, like he was, he was really trying to rally the troops. Not that they needed no. to be rallied, um, but he was full of you know, a lot of you know, almost like Churchill-esque uh, type of language. But Klinsman in the middle, trying not to laugh. I thought, is that, no, I really hope that you do well this time. I really hope you do well in the in the semi-finals, knowing that. You know, he probably, yeah. Yeah, the disaster was imminent. Um, he's a really interesting accent, I think, because it's a kind of a combination of German and, and American. He's lear learned a lot of his English, I think, in American. I obviously played for Spurs, but it's a kind of mad kind of combination. It's like he's he should be a baddie in a in a movie, James yeah. Bond movie. Yeah, all the the Germans like Boris Becker on. I love watching Becker on Wimbledon because it doesn't yeah. make any sense. It's just like no, that's right. And uh, Boris has this kind of thing he does with his eyes. This. <laughs> There's a very strange thing. He kind of he kind of squints and then he goes, "Oh yeah, that's right." Um, they, you know, he goes, oh to make the point. <laughs> oh, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> um, they uh, they uh, that was brilliant actually. I was switching between uh, Nadal and Del Potro. Pity they met, I think. Yeah. Just to veer towards tennis for a minute. So early, yeah. Uh, uh, Del Potro, I've always I've always liked him, um, but um, yeah. The uh, the tennis lads are uh, they they kind of refer to the football as well, don't they? It's like like you know we 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 know about football. We've heard of that. Yeah. You know while well, they do while well, they're doing this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> saw a game once. Yeah, we, uh, we saw a game once, and, and good luck to the English whoever they're playing. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, the working classes. Obviously, the other thing. <laughs> it's great for them, isn't it? The working yeah. classes. We even got a hill for them that they can watch the big screen from. Sometimes. Yeah, we, we that's right. Them, that's right. We yeah. let them in if they watched. Um, <laughs> what, there's a lot of stuff about uh, the size of Croatia and the size of Ireland and the lessons that we as a footballing nation can learn from, despite the fact they're all on, uh, on average like a foot and a half taller than us and, and you know, yeah. they've got a bit more killer instinct than we do as a... They, 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 seem, to, they seem to be more wiry and sinewy and uh, their physical, um, you know, uh, you know their, their demeanour. Um, 
But yeah, it, it was that that is that was the question. I think there was um on the panel between uh Martin O'Neill and and Billich. Um Billich basically owned Martin O'Neill at, at at one point during it and the the question was, you know, about um, Martin O'Neill took him on foolishly. I think Martin O'Neill got some strength or some impetus from 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 Roy Keane, who obviously, you know, Roy is a different specimen altogether. And uh but uh Roy uh, Martin said to, to Bill yeah, yeah, well, if, you know, you've done very well. You've done very well, you know. But uh, absolutely, you've done very well indeed. But uh, you know, you're very similar size, very similar size to Ireland. And uh, Bill says, yes, with better footballers. <laughs> and and uh, Martin just kind of went, yes, <laughs> <laughs> and couldn't he couldn't say anything. Uh, was amazed that he said it live on air, and all he could say was, yes. <laughs> so I agree with you, Slavin, but don't say that out loud, please. <laughs> so what's the lesson for us? The lesson for us is uh, what can Ireland learn? I would say get the Croatian manager <laughs> um, would be personally my my take on it. I mean, uh, you know, um, the, so was that question. Is, do Ireland have the players? Do, do we? Uh, and particularly now, uh, the opportunities Irish players get, whatever about English players, whatever the opportunity they get in the Premiership, um, and I actually think England done incredibly well from that point of view when yeah. you think of it. Like yeah. I mean, because it's always been that argument for the last whatever ten years that um, England's national team has suffered so badly because of the fact that they don't regularly play Premier Premiership League football or, or Champions League yeah. or Champions League almost never. Um, and Irish players obviously are even further down the ladder now uh, compared to like Italia ninety compared to even more recently. There were more um, players on the Irish team playing regular first team football for for top clubs, um, but I'm not sure it's ever going to change really now. I think I think you know you have to be kind of remarkable, yeah. a remarkable Irish player, and any kind of remarkable Irish player is who has the possibility of playing for England is going to be playing for England. I yeah. thought. Yeah, the Jack Reedishes of the world. Uh, you guys are taking over the third place playoff the, as tradition is uh, decrees. Is that right? Yes, yes, as tradition. Yeah, I don't know how many times we've done it. I think we've done it every World Cup since 1998. Remarkably, um, and I think it was done initially as a kind of a you know uh, as as a joke, obviously. But uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, so so yeah, we, we're we're it's it's a nice match for us to do another vital match, England Belgium. Their first match was meaningless <laughs> enough. This is particularly meaningless. Um, so yeah, we're presenting a course to three on our course to four. Is it on on uh, on Saturday? And uh, so yeah, we have a few things lined up. Um, off the boil, captains. Not one of them actually. <laughs> um, did you see that? Yes. Yeah. Did you wonder who you were, <laughs> or were you represented? I wasn't because, surely. No. Yeah. No, you weren't. It was a kind of a hybrid. It was a hybrid of 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 off the ball and uh, Owen wasn't in it, obviously. Uh, <laughs> obviously. Uh, yeah, obviously. Uh, <laughs> the other Owen was though. McDavid uh, was there. Uh, right? There was a kind of a kind of, kind of a McDavid uh, Joe combination. Um, but yeah, I've been working on Joe. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get Joe because he's just kind of so. I think his voice is so kind of um, soft, and um, I think he's kind of he likes the sound of his own soft tones. Uh, so, it's a, so it's a bit of that. Um, but it's actually it's a really interesting thing because from coming in, uh, as I did a few times uh, with Joe, uh, I, I just find that, as you'd suspect, if I'm around people, I just kind of start taking them on, <laughs> and uh, just kind of they get under you. And uh, but Joe, yeah, Joe is one of those. Has that effect? Um, and um, yeah, so we're we're uh, we're on at uh, quarter to four, and we're doing the whole shebang. We're, uh, if it goes to penal- uh, extra time and penalties, uh, there'll be a bit of a fair bit of improvisation. <laughs> 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 well, enjoy. Who's going to win the final? Um, I'd say France. I'd love Croatia to win, but I think France will. Great start, great stuff. Thanks very much. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Best of luck at the weekend.